Hello, friends. So the passage for today that is attributed to Jesus is well known, taken from Matthew chapter 11, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. A wild heart, a heart that is free of all of the forms of rule that hems it in and keeps it contained, is a gentle heart. Jesus gives and gave witness to this with his words and with his life. He said, let the little ones come to me, for the kingdom is theirs. Now, it may seem that when we hear things like this, that Jesus was, that Jesus' form of unconditional compassion and kindness and gentleness was a disposition that meant harsh words wouldn't be a part of that. That to be gentle of heart is to never use words that are harsh. And yet you look at the words that are attributed to Jesus and you see over and again where his heart is so free and so gentle and so tender and loving that he has no attachment to being the persona of this. He has the freedom to speak the truth that stands before him. Let me give you a couple examples. In less than a chapter later, Matthew 12, he says, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And going further on, Matthew 13, verse 15, for this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. And Matthew 15, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. He has so many, so many statements that if we were to, if they, if they bear an accurate testimony of history, he's standing up fairly strongly. But he does so as a gentle heart and reminds us that the wild heart of our being is so gentle that it's free. It's not gentle in a codependent way where there's not a standing up for personal truth or the truth of goodness. It's a gentleness that cares so much that there's not attachment to the persona, to the ideologies of what it looks like to be gentle, to the traditional ways of what it looks like to be faithful in love. And these misconceptions we have of what it means to be gentle, and there are many that, in, that make it difficult for us to be a wild heart. But this misconception around gentleness is one of them. We have ideas of what that looks like, always speaking in a soft tone. I can't tell you how much theology I have read where the interpretation of Mary as the model of holiness was to not speak unless spoken to. <laughs> and we know how incorrect that is, right? How culturally enforced it was as a model of feminine holiness. We are dismantling these misconceptions and we are invited through Jesus's words to penetrate more deeply to what real gentleness looks like.
Let me read again his amazing words. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There was a, a, a phrase in Matthew 18 that sh fashioned me as a gentle heart in a moment that was a moment of hurt. So Matthew 18 is the story that Jesus gives when Peter asks him about forgiveness. And Peter said, how many times must I forgive my brother? And David, uh, David and, and Peter says, hold on just a second, let me get to, uh, oops, oh, here I had pulled up on a different tab. He says, how many times? As many as seven times? And Jesus says, I wouldn't say seven times. Why not 70 times seven? And Jesus shows in this the kind of gentleness and humility, probably even more humility, that it takes to be a wild heart. And he gives this beautiful parable of a servant who owes the master money, but he has no way of paying it back, and he has a family he's supporting. So he goes and he pleads with the master, and the master forgives him. He feels sorry for him and he forgives him the loan, period, wipes it off. And then the servant goes out and finds a fellow servant who owed him a really small amount of what he owed to the master. And the colleague did the same thing. He fell before him and begged forgiveness. And he said, be patient with me and I will repay you. But this servant who had been forgiven the loan was not patient and had him thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. So of course, his fellow servants were shaken by this and went to the master. And what did the master say to him? You're a scoundrel of a servant. I let you off the whole debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have taken pity on your colleague like I took pity on you? The master then recanted the forgiveness and had him tortured until he found a way to repay it. Jesus says, we will all be treated this way unless we forgive from the heart. And there are so many things that keep us from that kind of humility. So many justified reasons that we hold that kind of humility of heart a step away. I remember when I was in the monastery and my mom and dad went through a really terrible divorce and I was very badly shaken by it. I was very sad. And of course that was held just in my own solitary way because we lived in silence. I would cry at night and, you know, persevere in prayer and all the rest, but I was sad. Well, unknown to me, I was tending, I was playing pipe organ for the liturgies and unknown to me, I was tending to choose sad pieces to play <laughs> as the intro and the outro to the liturgies. But of course, I was oblivious to this happening. And we were at a recreation, the time of day when you talk with each other. And we were all together, novices and professed. And the leader in the community mocked me, saying out to everybody, well, Sister Annunciata only plays sad, morose pieces. And she knew what I was going through. And it was like a stab in my heart. It hurt. That somebody I knew and trusted made something I was doing a mockery. And I went into prayer that night. It was right before Compline. And I just was being present with the grief. I wasn't being accusatory. I wasn't angry. I wasn't pointing fingers, but I was just, the grief came up to me. And this statement alighted for me. You'll be treated, well, it was in a more gentle way from Jesus. It was, you have been forgiven so much. You can forgive this. And energetically, it was gone. It was gone. The humility was there that made my heart able to be wild. It made my heart able to be gentle. 
Jesus gives us this lesson. Gentleness is not about never speaking our truth or having emotion around things. It is about being so free that we come from a place of utter humility at all times. It is a gentleness that has experienced the gentleness and the unconditional compassion of the beloved. So today's practice to let us open up to this gentleness is actually a Qigong practice. That may seem a little unusual, but Qigong works with ourselves, our bodies, and our subtle energy in a very gentle way. In fact, this teacher, and you can look on Holden Qigong, which is where I get this little cleansing practice we're going to use. I love him. He's a great teacher. And he said that doing Qigong is so gentle. It's like being in water. Think about how you would move if you're in water. And you do it slowly so that the neural pathways and the cells and the mind can be brought into a fluid, relaxed state. So practices like these can open up the wisdom that Jesus presents us with very well. Now, what we're going to do today is a four-part practice that is about cleansing and renewing our energy. We're energy beings, and part of what makes it challenging to hold our clarity as gentle, essential individuals is that we're influenced by things. Sometimes we can feel like we're just being walloped all around like this <laughs> because we're permeable by nature. But there is a way to become so stable in our gentleness and our humility that we are free in the face of it, that we're not influenced by it, that we're not dominated by it, that we're not brought down by it. Just like that moment of illumination I had. Now, I was not moving. I was in dropped into deep meditation. But when I heard the beloved speak to me, you have been forgiven so much. You can forgive as well. It wasn't a self-judgment, it was a release. Qigong can help us do this with all that we're holding in the mind, and the body, and the heart. So I'm going to invite you, actually I am inviting you, <laughs> to stand up right now. I'm going to stand, and you won't be able to see all of me, but I'll describe what we're doing. We are going to do four different exercises. One is a cleansing exercise. The second is a venting exercise. The third is a protecting exercise. And the fourth is a integration exercise. Super simple. You can just take less than 10 minutes to do this. We'll even be doing this now in less than 10 minutes. So for the cleansing exercise, I'm going to have to actually move this. The ceiling line is so small. The cleansing exercise you're going to inhale and you're going to lift up onto your toes. So your heels are off the ground. And as you inhale, you're going to lift your energy up like this. And on the exhale, you're going to down. You're going to drop the heels hard. You're going to drop the arms and you're going to let yourself be cleansed of the energies that you pick up that can make it difficult to live as the wild gentle heart. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to, inhaling. Three more. And the next one, you're going to stand with feet hip width apart, feet solidly down on the ground. And you're going to place the hands like this in connection with the earth. And this is venting. Venting is where you release and let things move through you. We hold on to things in our attempt to work them out. What would happen if we let them move through us? We're not even going to move other than the breath. So you're going to inhale. And on the exhale, you're going to vent. 
moving through the shoulders, arms, out the hands, down into the earth. Slowly. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, vent. Ah, release, 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 release. One more. All right. And now this one is a, a protection, a protection. And what we're gonna do is, this is in Qigong, the heart center. So our hearts can become defensive when we have experienced so much hurt. And all we're going to do is we're going to open the heart and increase the movement of um, emotional protection in our energy field. So we're going to start like this. And we're going to inhale. Draw the arms open, inhaling and exhaling. Weight on the right foot completely over to the right of the hands. Exhale. And inhaling back to center. Open. And exhaling left, full weight on the left foot. Inhaling center, open the heart, exhaling full weight on the right. Inhaling up, open, full weight left. Continue with me, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. One more, inhaling, exhaling. Now we're going to integrate this strong energy field that we have opened that is ourselves. We've released all that's not out. We've released our reaction to what's not ours. And now we're going to amplify our essence. We're going to hold the heart energy centers and you're going to breathe in and out. And with every breath, you're going to see yourself in a golden field of light in front. Continue to breathe in back, below, above, all angles. Golden energy field of Slow breathing, make the breath be slow. One more full breath. And let the arms come down. And now just notice how you feel. You should feel a little tingly, a little change because your, your energy is renewed. Now when you're ready, open your eyes. Right? Great to be with you all. May we be gentle, wild hearts. Blessings, my friends.